Hi everybody, it's Stefan Molyneux from Freedom Aid Radio. Hope you're doing well. This is a scaled down true news. And I was gonna, I was really torn. I was gonna do a big presentation with graphics and charts about how when you vote for Republicans, spending increases, and when you vote for Democrats, war doesn't decrease, and all of that sort of stuff. And all of that is available if you want to look for it. But I ended up not doing that, and I wanted to speak to you just soul to soul, so to speak, to hopefully get you out of this mad delusion and self-abuse called voting. And the reason is that you don't want to vote. I'm going to tell you, you don't want to vote because of the facts. The facts are that voting uh, means nothing. It's worse than meaning nothing. It encourages participation in a coercive and destructive system. It gives sanction to evil. And people have been voting for a smaller government for decades. Um, Reagan is still called a fiscal conservative, though federal spending went two-thirds, increased, increased two-thirds under his rule. Uh, the federal government has grown by leaps and bounds under the Democrats. Uh, Bill Clinton kept the bombing going in Serbia and, uh, and Iraq. So you don't vote because you think that voting will set you free or restrain government in any kind of way, because you're not an idiot. I mean, I'm going to speak to you as an intelligent, aware, brilliant human being, which is, if you weren't, you wouldn't be watching this. And so I'm not going to give you facts, because facts would be insulting to you. Facts would be um, to indicate that you were unable to process the basic reality of the world that you live in and the historical evidence of the futility of trying to restrain an agency of violence like the state by uh, begging for crumbs from the table uh, or, or favors. So you know that the government is fundamentally uh, coercive. It is a coercive institution. That's, that's what it does. That's all it is. And you know that voting is a pitiful plea. It is a beg. Please, master, give me back a little bit of what you have stolen. And I'm not going to insult you by pretending that that is an argument that is anything other than an emotional panic and a fear of increased predation and a begging for favors. The reality of the state is that they'll take whatever they want from you because they have the guns and the jails and the military and that they will attempt to bribe you to get you to participate and give them moral sanction for their theft by getting you to participate in a system that allows you to choose this, that and the other. Of course, you can only choose your master. You can't choose not to be a slave, which, of course, is why the whole thing is so patently ridiculous. They take your money to reward their enemies, sorry, to reward their friends and to punish their enemies, uh, and they will dangle. Uh, you can look at this in any of the campaigns. Ooh, we'll give you a little tax credit. Ooh, we'll give you a little tax break. Ooh, we'll give you a little bit of control over your retirement. Ooh, we'll give you a little bit of money for your medical expenses. Ooh, we'll do this. It's all ridiculous. It's all bribery. It's embarrassing. You're not allowed to bribe them, but the whole point of the system is to bribe you with the leftovers of what they have stolen from you in the first place. So I'm not going to insult you by giving you facts that you already have. So I'm just going to make an appeal. This is a blatant emotional appeal. I think that there are very good arguments in it, but I'm not going to insult your intelligence with facts that you can easily get a hold of yourself. We're going to talk about what is going on in the realm of emotion, in the realm of self-esteem, in the realm of pride when it comes to thinking about voting. Do you know what voting is, fundamentally? Have you ever seen this scene? Maybe this happened to you. You go to school, you're a kid, a little kid, maybe it's your first day, maybe it's whatever. You're early on. And the older kids grab some candy or some whatever, right? And what they do is they then stand on either side of you and they toss this candy back and forth. And you run, you know, back and forth. Hey, give me my candy back. I want my candy, guys. Well, that's voting. They take from you, and then you take the runaround trying to beg for a little bit of the scraps back. <sighs> so, what I'm going to try and do in this video is appeal to your base human pride. I mean, God, oh, what a pitiful spectacle to beg your political masters for a few scraps back from the riches they have stolen from you at gunpoint. How? Pitiful and ridiculous is that, and what a self-shaming, self-abusing action it is to run around in the playground begging for what was rightfully yours to be returned to you in little scraps, whatever we feel 
will delude you into giving us your sanction and your support. When, the, when they take your candy and they're throwing it back and forth in the playground, what do you do? Well, you can't get the candy back, and you can't get your tax money back from the state, you can't get control of your life back from the state, because they have the guns. They run the show. They have the guns. Well, you simply don't participate. You say, that candy is not worth my pride. The spectacle of me running around and begging for people to give me back what they have stolen from me when they're never going to do it anyway is too shameful. It is too embarrassing. It is too pitiful for me to engage in that behavior. I am going to walk away. Keep the fucking candy. Keep my money. I'm not going to beg you to give it back. I'm not going to plead with you. I'm not going to get on my knees. I'm not going to engage in the fantasy that this is at all about me or about virtue or about control or about getting good things done in the world. I am not going to give you that sanction. I am not going to participate in this violent institution. And really, the presidency, I mean, come on, people. You don't have to be brain surgeons. And I'm not telling you anything you don't know emotionally. You don't have to be brain surgeons to understand that changing the president changes nothing about the system. It's like you're trading in an old Lada for a BMW and all you get is the old Lada back with a BMW hood ornament on the top and they say, hey, we upgraded you. You're changing the hood ornament on the car. It's nothing. It's a, it's a ridiculous illusion. What are your choices? Cranky old fascist versus creepy hands in your pocket socialist? These are your choices and you're going to participate in this? Have some pride for God's sakes. Walk away. There is no virtue to be gained from attempting to grab control of the gun and give it to the people you like so that virtue can be accomplished. You cannot achieve virtue by pointing guns at people. I mean, look, I can, I can understand selling your soul, compromising your values, getting involved in this sickening, disgusting uh, uh, um, empire situation called voting for the U.S. government. I could understand selling out if you got at least a reasonable price. If you're going to sell your soul, hold out for something little more than a futile series of fucking hanging chads that change nothing. Nothing! You're selling your soul for nothing! It's not going to change based on voting! You know this. Wake up to what you already know. You're not being paid a million dollars to participate in this brutal system, in this empire with hundreds of military bases, in this system that slaughters Iraqis. They're not leaving Iraq until the empire comes down. They're still in Japan, for God's sakes. 60 plus years after the end of the Second World War, they built permanent military bases. It's a fantasy that they're leaving because you're going to vote. You're livestock to them. They milk you for money to bribe their friends. And you on occasion, when the mood strikes. Do you know what it is, your relationship with the state? And we'll talk about America collectively here. Again, this is stuff that you all know. What you are as a voter is you are inheriting a 300 year abusive relationship. It's like you've had a 300-year marriage to a guy who beats the shit out of you every day. Now, yeah, in the beginning, he was weaker, he was smaller, he didn't beat you up, but he's been working out. He's now about 10 times your size, and he beats the shit out of you every day. And after 300 years of this marriage, what are you doing? Well, you're running around saying, oh, no, you see, this time he's going to change. He's going to be better. He's going to be nice to me. He's going to give me what I want. He's going to bring me flowers. There's going to be romance and ponies. It's crap! It's bullshit! They take 
with guns and throw millions in jail. This is an abusive relationship and after 300 fucking years, wake up to the reality of what it is. It is brutality with rhetoric. It is a fist in the glove of kindly speeches. And what do you do after a 300 year abusive relationship where you get beaten up more and more every day? You get a divorce. You walk away. You take your pride and leave. You don't legitimize a violent, coercive, brutal, hierarchical, hegemonic system by pretending it's voluntary, by, by pretending that you have a say, by pretending that the brutality of war and empire and violence and enslavement and coercion and jailing, the rape rooms of prisons have millions of people in them, the vast majority of whom ended up there because they carried the wrong kind of vegetation in their fucking pockets. This is a fascist, brutal dictatorship. And if you participate, you are saying it is voluntary. You are trying to work with the illusion that if you vote, the gun will be pointed at someone else than you. But it won't. Obama, McCain, it doesn't matter. No matter who you vote for, the government stays in power. And no one's talking about the real issues anyway. The fact that your income taxes goes to pay interest on a debt that you never incurred, that's not being talked about. Nobody ever says, we're going to stop taking money from you in the first place rather than give you little breaks back. We're going to cancel these debts that you had nothing to do with. No, your livestock to pay off this debt. And voting is the fence. Voting is the chain link fence. Voting is the electrified fence. There are choices that you can make. Instead of, and I linked a video I did on freeing yourself from politics, you can check it out uh, to the right. But there are things that you can do. Instead of watching politics and, ooh, who said what at which rally, and is he a Muslim, and is he... This is a soap opera that sinks you into the blood of humiliating subjugation. Again, it's just a matter of pride. Don't beg for your freedom. Don't beg for scraps. Don't pray and hope and wish that scratching, scratching from shit in a little booth is going to change freedom in your life. It's not. It never has. It never will. You could vote in Rome as well in the past. And Athens, as Socrates found out. So, fuck politics. Forget spending your time following this bullshit, distracting soap opera of whether the socialist or the fascist ends up in the White House. If they can do a whole lot, you're already in a dictatorship. And if they can't, and so don't participate, and if they can't, forget it. What can you do with your time? Everything is a zero-sum game. Every time, every minute you spend on politics is a minute you're not spending doing something productive to actually make the world free, including raising your self-esteem. We have to outgrow slavery. We have to be greater and bigger and more confident than tax-fucking livestock slaves. You build up your pride. You build up your self-esteem. You build up your knowledge. You build up your virtue. You build up your strength. And we outgrow the slavery. We outgrow being beasts of burden for our rulers. So we educate ourselves. We talk to people about virtue. We talk to people about pride. We talk to people about the nature of violence inherent in the system. We talk to people about a better life. We talk to people about opportunities for real freedom in your life, for virtue, for volunteerism in your life, where you can do it, where it is possible, where you have effect, where you have control. Let the other fucking livestock run down. I'm going to vote. Everything's going to change. But you and I know better. You and I have the pride to not subjugate, subjugate ourselves to this pathetic enslaving ritual. So when it comes time to vote, read a book on freedom or read one of my books if you like. They're all free. 
Talk to your friends, talk to your family. Talk to strangers about virtue and pride and voluntarism and the evils of the state. Do not set foot in this abattoir of empire and slavery and subjugation and imprisonment and kidnapping and extraordinary rendition and torture. Do not participate in this institution founded on crimes, which executes war crimes, genocide, wars, murder, kidnapping, imprisonment, on a daily basis. Don't participate. Don't beg. Don't beg. But stand with pride and say, I do not participate with violence. I do not yell at rain clouds. I do not wrestle for control of the gun, but simply and forevermore point out that violence is evil. I will not participate in it. I will not subjugate myself to this fetid ritual, this ridiculous, magical bullshit called voting. They will not get my sanction for what they are doing. I will not vote in protest. I will not vote with the illusion that I will become free by begging for freedom. But instead, I will step back and I will not engage and I will withdraw and I will speak with pride and virtue and confidence about what real freedom is in this world, which is not running after your political masters, hoping to suck up some of the blood that falls from the corpses they carry. But love and pride and virtue in our private lives will spread the strength we need to outgrow our slavery. Thank you.